Oh, wow. Um, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Oh, Mayor Spicer is here for just a minute. Oh, hi. Hi, all. I just wanted to have a chance to say thank you to Courtney and hello to Anthony. Anthony, I know um, uh, we're scheduling some time for us to get together, but uh, I, I didn't want to miss an opportunity to just say thank you publicly to Courtney for all your great work. And, uh, you know, I know whatever you go and do in your next part of your life, this next chapter in your life is going to be great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, That's great. Yeah, thank you so much, Madam Mayor, for taking the time to attend today. And I know you've your team, you and your team have been so responsive in everything that I've you know needed or asked for, the little things and the big things both. And so um just working together, you know, to serve the community and talk about other ideas and um, you know, things that we all can see that are needs and finding ways to make different projects and initiatives happen. I think, you know, working together has been an honor with your team, um, you know, being the mayor and, you know, the first black mayor, Framingham first mayor in general. And so, I mean, it's a huge challenge. And I just love the fact that we're a city and then we have an urban environment. And I think that's just something that we're, you know, so blessed to have all the dynamics of that as we move forward. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time today to attend. I'm definitely honored and humbled that you, you know, chose to come. Thank you so much. And good to see all of you. Some of you I see on a regular basis, so it's good to see you. Have a great evening, all, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks, Mayor Spicer. So now I'll call us back to order. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, I have 29 people on the call, which is really amazing. So welcome, everybody. Um, so could I have a motion to approve our minutes from last meeting? Motion to approve. Approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Aye. So um, I guess, Courtney, it's over to you for an outgoing director's report. Yes, thank you, Anne, for um, <laughs> acknowledging that. Um, so if you didn't know, for, for our meeting today, it's brought to you by Pride and Parquet. <laughs> That's one outgoing rhyme for everyone because I love a good rhyme. So, hey, Courtney, I have one right there. <laughs> oh my God. For well, everyone, hold uh, up your pride and parquet. Yeah, yeah, I had one. I <laughs> happen to have one right here. <laughs> that would be an amazing screenshot. Oh, I have to readmit someone. All right, fantastic. So, now I'm going to go into screen share mode. Um, my little presentation here. All right, fantastic. Oh, Lieutenant Wareham is here, fantastic. Um, I'm gonna be multitasking, letting people in while I go through this. So first of all, um, in choosing this position last year, or sorry, in, in taking over, um, you know, starting here in 2016, 2017, it's been, you know, it's very hard to get these types of jobs in general. So I was very blessed and I knew it was very hard to break into the planning world in a way where you're really boots on the ground doing tangible pro projects. And so I was very honored to have this and I was really chomping at the bit. And I was telling some people before the meeting started that I didn't really appreciate um, what Holly, you know, my predecessor, you know, all the work that she did prior to this um, in, in the way that she felt towards the end, you know, nonprofit burnout, things of that nature. So now I appreciate um, what she went through and I can go back and see all the hard work that she did in the middle and you know when you have that bell curve essentially when you're running a program like this um, and I think you know COVID has taken a hit on a lot of us just our energy levels and, and how we work and so I thought you know this is four years it's a really good time to bring in a new person and we kind of have this time right now you know the winter to work on grants and planning and then really hit the ground running as we come out of COVID hopefully in a couple months, um, hopefully. So, and you know, when you apply in this job, you know, I had my master's in public policy, so I was able to do some of that work and my master in city planning. And so the next step is to get your, become certified with the American Institute of Certified Planners. So I was supposed to take the test three times last year. I kept pushing it off because I wasn't studying because I was working and tired. And so I'm finally taking it um, in May. And yet when you qualify to take this test, you have to talk about interventions. And so I put down three interventions here that I was really proud of. Um, and 
when we were hiring, you know, the new director, I was sort of overseeing the administrative element of that process. And I was looking at, you know, the resumes and people coming in and I'm like, I don't know that I would have been hired if it was, you know, I don't know if I would have been picked because the qualifications and how many people applied, we had like 45 people apply. And so over somewhere in that range. And so I'm just like, I don't know. I worked at the VA. I helped out homeless veterans. You know, I had all these other translatable skill sets. I did sales for a little while, but hopefully it, it appears, you know, it worked out okay in the long run. But um, I was very, I'm just very blessed that I was hired. I want to say that I was so excited to, to take over. I couldn't wait for this meeting where I was at the meet the table, like I'm ready to go. We have work to do. So um, but I can definitely appreciate how Holly felt, you know, towards the end when she did five years here, like she did a year longer than me. So, um, oh, there she is. So that's Holly, my predecessor, or yes. And I, um, I'm just so grateful for all the hard work that she did. And there's Anne, I think this is the marathon event. And it, it, it takes so much hard work to, you know, be a cheerleader. And a lot of people called Holly a cheerleader. And I came in and I didn't really like that word cheerleader. I was like, oh, but I've done all this stuff. I'm more serious than that. But really, you know, the community does need a cheerleader and it is a lot of hard work, but it's not just Holly. It's everyone around her that she gets to cheerlead with her and, and spread that across, you know, different um, cultures, geographies, et cetera. So, I'm just really indebted to the work that she did as the very first executive director of the organization for five whole years and what she struggled with and what she went through. And she was extremely candid. Thankfully, she was extremely candid with me on the challenges she faced and the ideas that she had and implementation hurdles that we all face in this, you know, challenging work that we do. So um, some things big, some things that are kind of overriding for me is just an ingrained sense of, you know, community spirit, you know, make people feel that feel that sense of spirit when they're here, essentially, and not feel downtrodden. Um, and a sense of possibility and opportunity. When people come to America, you know, from other countries, they all say possibility, opportunity. And if you're in the business sector, you think as an entrepreneur, you know, or if you're a developer, you, you sort of live in that. But if you're not in working in those fields, you may get a little bit stuck in the status quo and that can cause you to have some like long held beliefs that are often negative. You're like, this is how it was. This is how it is. And this is how it will always be. And perhaps you feel confident because you can predict that you have that confidence in your sense of predictability. And often people are just very, I've noticed, just very comfortable in this negative predictability. And it's, it's not positive and doesn't make you feel good. And it definitely doesn't fit into these two. Um, themes here, but our job is to push up against that, obviously. And so that takes a lot of hard work. It takes determination. It's very exhausting. Um, and some of the things when I started downtown, like about spirit and possibility and opportunity, you know, I was really big on these lampposts because these are in very um, big places. They're, they're broadcasted. These are not nestled, you know, back. And so I really wanted to Make people feel good and so one of the first things I worked on with some interns was just making sure that you know our street corners you know that we have here you know these are by the downtown common one of these is by Arlington Street Park um, just getting the simple things getting stuff like that fixed up and I was so happy a couple years ago when this got fixed too I could sleep better at night because I knew these rusted beams were no longer an issue when you're doing yoga on the downtown common so those things just you know small little things and I've worked with a lot of people that want to be on the board of directors here and they want to see something super flashy and big but we're a nonprofit we do incremental work and it's usually um, it takes sometimes it takes a while, a couple of years, not super long, but it's incremental work. It's not expensive, you know, huge projects that are going to just like change downtown overnight. And I think the incremental element is valuable because it gives people a sense of ownership and belonging. And you have to take pride in the little small wins at the end of the day. And then I'm going to talk about defacing a little bit too. And that and this, this is some physical defacing. You see some graffiti here. Um, and then that's Brian and his son there painting the, Arle the Pearl Street garage rather. But you see physical defacing and that's easy to um, take care of. You can, you know, get people together, take some pictures, smile. It's a, it's a feel good moment. 
Um, then there's the psychological defacing. So I have a next slide. I think it's the next slide. So I know it's unprofessional to put this up, but I think it's important because the next slide that I'm going to segue into has some comments on there that I, I keep, I have a word document and it's saved as nasty comments. And when I see these things, I'm like, oh, I have to defend downtown. And then last summer, these were all from last summer, these comments I'm going to show you. I said, I'm going to talk to the business owners and see how does that affect them when they see this online. And if you take that a step further, how does that affect how our immigrant run businesses or our minority run businesses and, and their customers feel about coming together with everyone, with the majority populations, the American populations, do they feel welcome? And I know we have these welcoming groups and things of that nature, but when you see these comments, how does it make you feel? And so these are just a couple, three rather. Um, I was nice enough to block out their last names. I didn't have to, but I did respond to all three of these. And with my research method sort of background, um, I respond, you know, measurable outcomes. Here's our annual report. Here's all this good stuff that's happening. You know, vacancy rates are going down. New businesses are coming. People are hiring. And this is, you know, 2019. Even in 2020, you know, we had very few businesses closed during COVID, thankfully, that stayed closed. Um, we had some temporary closures, obviously, but we were still able to have, you know, the businesses very resourceful. So when I see that psychological sort of defacing or undermining, I usually go this route. But I have to remember too that I have all these champions around me that are always working, they're activating our spaces, they're coming together, like in the bottom corner here, you see people from, Pen these are Pennsylvania and Indiana residents building friendships on a pup crawl. You have new businesses coming in like um, Pollo Real, and that was 2018, the fall. Um, and then you have races, yoga, things of that nature. So people are filling our spaces and they're doing my job for me. They're demonstrating everything that Main Street's programs need to demonstrate. And I don't have to do that by myself. And even though I feel like, oh, it's my job to respond to these comments on Facebook, like it is also important to recognize that we're all in this together. And I know that's an overused phrase, but it is very true. And I think Anthony is gonna have a, um, hopefully a easier time keeping the momentum going and keeping everyone um, going. So I think someone's trying to enter, but anyway. I'm going to play a little video here. It's very short, don't worry. Oh, sorry. slide that little video that I showed that was a grant that we actually did a year ago over a year ago now in February of 2020 and that was something that we wanted to do and get funding from the Metro West uh, the foundation excuse me for Metro West to do to bring new residents old, older residents together and to take ownership over our public spaces in ways that have used um teaching of music, gardening, arts, things of that nature, and helping everyone feel like a more collected, tighter community. Um, and another thing that really helps in this, this organization, it runs on the energy of the youth, of students, college students, that is. And so, so, so blessed to work with Framingham State University um, and high school students too. I know Rayon is here on the call and I have another um, clip with the high schoolers, but 
working with these students and showing them like they're the when we talked about that first slide, the spirit and the opportunity and the possibility, like they are, they still have this fresh lens to look at life through. And so their input needs to be valued, whether, you know, all the students up through, you know, whatever age. And so they're the ones that are going to be able to, you know, learn. And I made that, you know, I tasked them to go talk to the city about um, having a dispensary downtown or, having um, the Framingham sign bylaw or whatever the task was with the canvassing. And so they had these opportunities to do this really valuable work and talk to government leaders about their findings. That's all very, you know, research-based and um, on, the, on the heavier on the data side, but really great experience for them. And I just am really grateful um, to work with the university students, you know, in these capacities. So thank you to everyone, um, the high schoolers as well. I mean, Rayad, um, I have a little thing coming up with the high schoolers. But this is a really cool picture of our youth too. And I think something for Anthony to think about, and I hear often too, is that, you know, downtown needs to be a little bit more um, engaging for the youth. And I love this photo here. And I did not tell them to pose that way, but I just love the way that they're all, the perspectives are here. Um, and you can see there's one, there's a young man on a bike. You have two skateboarders here. And I believe this gentleman here to the right is walking, but making downtown walkable, bikeable, safe. Um, you know, they can cross the road safely. This is the thoroughfare here for the car carriers, just, um, just a couple steps away. So, and, you know, making sure that the area is positive environment for them to thrive in as well. Um, and so I think that's just something to keep in mind and how businesses can engage in that and really tap into their energy. Um, and something that I'm really proud of is just how our arts and entertainment really started to grow and flourish over the years. And that's something, you know, when those three people, those, those nasty comments I showed you, like this is another testament of downtown and bringing people in. And um, it's just spread out. It's from one side of 135 to the other side of 135. You have the library all the way down to ATAC on here. So it's really cool just to see this, you know, tapping into one another and that this is gonna grow and continue, you know, when we, you know, come out of COVID. And these are the art galleries as well that we have. And again, it's another example of just a, that creative arts and the creative talent that you have and bringing in that culture more and more into our community and the value of that as well. Um, and this is a project that we did that I thought was neat just because it was picked up by the Associated Press and spread across the whole um, country, as you can see, you know, Texas, um, Michigan, Seattle, Washington State. And so it was really neat to have this project broadcast across the country um, and really help Framingham get some national attention. And then I also looked back at some of the things that didn't really, you know, come to fruition that I was working on. And a big one was this, um, not all of it's like my fault, like I did it and I, I totally failed, but it is important to learn from things that don't come to fruition. So Edward M. Kennedy, we were working on putting this multi-purpose use the 380 Waverly Street lot there. And this was back in, um, I wanna say 2017, early 2018. And this was gonna be a matching funds from mass development through patronicity. And then I finished it all up. I got it on Patronicity. I had a fence quote. I had talked to Blake Lucas um, about how to get water in there and everything. So the whole nine yards, it was, I did a budget for it. And then at the last second, you know, they said, oh, we're not going to go forward with this. And so I knew they're probably going to end up selling the land, which is what's happening. So, but it was really good practice for me to do that in the long run. Um, and then we did a program called the College Underground where students could come and there wouldn't, to advertise at the university, you couldn't advertise events that have alcohol involved. So we just did a non-alcoholic event. And so it was interesting though, because I did talk to the president of the university, Framingham State after this, and he's like, yeah, the kids went to party. So, I mean, I went to Ohio State, like I get it. Um, so we tried, but it's all about, you know, trying new things and just building that momentum. You know, Mike Gatlin, you know, he was the first president that I had worked with. He's like, people are going to come, just keep going and keep trying and do as much as you can, as many events as you can, just to get people in the habit of coming downtown. Um, and then obviously we tried a, diff a couple of different ways to do some, we, we did some yard signs. We put some signs, some small signs that Dan now at the DPW let me put up on the the poles there just to help people navigate downtown. I know it's tricky if you're trying to like park. I always tell everyone park at the post office. There's tons of parking there. You don't have to worry. Um, but finding the parking behind the post office can be a little tricky. So 
um, I think, you know, moving forward and just keeping your eye on that goal of helping people get where they're going. Um, and keep walking too, like Jane Jacobs, she's a heroine of city planning, right? And so there's so much to learn and observe just by looking at the, the built environment and wondering why does our built environment look this way? Like what in the history caused things, to, why, are, why are things the way they are? And then you kind of see these different changes all the time in the built environment. And um, there's so many great photo opportunities that you can have with that. And this, this bottom photo here, these are shamrock strollers from a couple of years ago and they're leaving an exhibit A and they're, I think they're heading to Springdale. So I think that was, that was really neat um, just to see the example that downtown is walkable despite what anyone says to, um, to that regards. And we had that huge project that was done 2015, 2016 to that effect. So there's just so much to learn by walking around. And I think the more that we can get people walking, even if it means they have to park a couple blocks away, very, very valuable. Um, and just to keep connecting with people too. I know the high school, um, they were very involved in our for confidence that we did. And here's a student, a sophomore, Selena at Twins Barbershop, and she was participating in that. Um, and if you know me, you know how I feel about I networking is an important thing to do going to those big meetings because you can make those, you know, quick connections. Um, but I do, I love meeting with people one-on-one -on -one and just learning, you know, the intimate details of what's going on with their business or their situation and really building those personal connections with them um, so that we can, you know, have that trust. So when like say COVID hits, they feel comfortable, they know me and they know they can reach out to me and I'm not a stranger to them essentially. Um, so yeah. And then the thing that I love about nonprofits is that you have to earn your keep. And I know people are like fundraising is so hard and you have to do your mission. But if you're demonstrating what you're doing and people believe in it and they can actually see a tangible result, like it's really fun. And I think organizations that operate with that mentality, like I think they're going to be on the roadmap to success just because it is so fun to demonstrate like we're doing this. Please be on board so that we can do more things and keep the momentum going. Um, and one of my favorite artists here on the right, it's Jeremy Green. Um, he's a viola player and he does a lot of pop hits and he came to Sofa Cafe. Um, and I do want to thank Parks and Rec. They let me put a boat in Farm Pond. And I know Tom over there was like, don't make me regret this. The boat, it did get a little, the, this is Dave Anderson. He put his boat in the water. He got a little wet, but it was a great time. And so just trying new things out and seeing how they go, it's, it's all part of the experience and being open-minded about it. Um, and I just want to thank, you know, the board of directors, the small businesses downtown, anyone that has helped me out to um, invest in our community and get others to get on board with the incremental, non-flashy work that we do often. Often it's filling out applications and helping people with their sign projects or sidewalk cafe tables or, or whatever it is. But most of the time it's a lot of grueling paperwork, you know, phone calls, texts, did you get this done? Did you do that? Do I need to see you? And I'm usually the one running around making that happen. But, you know, it's great to have ambassadors that can help, you know, get others to understand the community and to push back against some of the urban stereotypes. And urban stereotypes, um, it's something that isn't unique to downtown Framingham. It's something that you see across the United States, across the world, and it really undermines, it dehumanizes folks, um, usually minority or immigrant folks, um, to be blunt. And so it's important that we can, if we want to preserve our culture, you know, and, and diversify businesses, um, we can do so. And so if you look at the 2020 annual report, it has in there Sam's um, Sushi, Sam's Art and Sushi, I believe. And so that's like a Brazilian business that's going to have sushi. And then we have a Latino business that's going to have a creamery. Um, and so you have these still immigrant businesses or minority businesses that are going to be having diversified types of fare that may have a universal appeal, like a creamery or like a sushi restaurant. So um, it's all very great and unique. And I do want to thank Brian for putting up that banner there um, on the bottom because there are, all, there are always ambulances going by when we put this banner up. He's never fallen off the ladder, but it is extremely windy when he does put the banner up. This welcome to downtown banner for October Fast and for our marathon event. Um, and these are my parents. I just want to give them a shout out. They're not on the Zoom call, but they're very supportive people. So um, my, yeah, I'll just keep going. So I did a virtual scavenger hunt back in, I think this was April of last year. So if you know the answer, you can shout it out.
That's the Aztec. Yes. Yeah. It used to be called Sorella's, but now it's the Aztec. Yeah. That's our favorite place. Great job, That's everyone. Good. Okay. Yeah. So I did this little, like they were, I think they were at, um, when they started this, I think when they were on le the letter before this, they collect all the letters and it spelled out a marathon runner's name at the end. It was cute. Um, so this is from one of the Flag Day parades. This is the Hot Tamale Band. So this is me kind of like waving goodbye. So I just want to thank everyone for all of your engagement and support and kind of understanding the dynamics of the job. It is multifaceted. Um, the Main Street's organization, you know, you really are doing the, the high level work to, you know, attract people to the area, but also make people that are here feel good about the work they're doing too. Um, and making the businesses feel included and really going above and beyond to help them out um, at the end of the day too, to make sure that you're compensating for any negativity or, or whatever is happening and making sure um, that we can all ideally manifest the tenants of the Main Street America model without having anyone feel sort of left out. So thanks. That's it. Yay, Courtney, thank you. You're thank welcome. you, Courtney. Thank you. Um, Courtney. Courtney, you are our hot tamale. Yeah, you didn't see it, but you <laughs> put in the chat, you're our hot tamale. Oh, <laughs> I see there. Thank you, Drew. I appreciate it. Well, I know, I know a lot of people, oh, Julie's clapping on her picture. Um, I know a lot of people want to um, do a little toast to you. We oh, suggested yeah. everyone bring a, a beverage. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to start, but if you, um, I'm not sure how we're going to do this, but if you want to do a toast, just sort of poke me and I'll let you go next. So. Here's my toast. Courtney loves rhymes. She already told you that. And she writes songs that we all have to sing with her. And she delivers gifts with little poems. So it, it's pretty fun. I, I tried, Courtney. I didn't get all the way, but <laughs> I have a little bit for you. Here's to Courtney. When she joined us in 2016, we were not sure she could replace Holly, our first director. She soon showed us that with boundless enthusiasm, loads of fun, limitless ideas, determination, a bit of paranoia, maybe too much paranoia, <laughs> um, a bit of seasonal affect disorder in the summertime, an uncanny knack with social media, and her understanding of both the big picture and the small gesture. She became the perfect executive director for her time. And so Courtney, a toast to you today. Best wishes as you go on your way. Our board says thanks a lot for everything you have brought and sends you off with a big hip hip hooray. Hip <laughs> to Courtney. Oh, Courtney. 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 To Courtney, thank hey, you. Courtney. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> All right, does anyone else want to give a toast? Julie. So, I, I never thought it would be possible that I could meet somebody that had more energy than I did. And your passion for this role and just for the city of Framingham and just for all the wonderful changes that you've made and that you brought people together. I just wanna thank you. And it's been a pleasure working with you and I know you're gonna do great things. Thank you, Courtney. 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 Hey. Courtney, go answer your door. You know what? Somebody was knocking and that was rude. And I did not want to leave. And they were like banging on my door. And I'm no, like, I'm reading a poem and someone's banging on my door. Okay. Go answer the door. <laughs> it's my husband. He's delivering some things to her. <laughs> Let's hope, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> He's texting me saying she's not answering. <laughs> so Drew, is your hand up because you want to give a toast? I do. If, if it, okay, if, when, if, she, when she comes back. Perfect. 
<laughs> she does know my husband. She's it's not he's not gonna be a stranger. And this is the greatest meeting ever. Oh thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are hard to people pull off. people arrive. It's I great. know. Hey. There's still a lot of oh there's Jackie. I'd like ready. to second that, Adam. Yeah, there's some items here. <laughs> I got some flowers. And some, whatever. Thanks. Congratulations, Courtney. Thank you. Well, you, you have to admire those flowers. They're from Vivas. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm like, if it's a solar panels person trying to sell me solar panels during the meeting. <laughs> um, Why is it always solar panels and never Girl Scout cookies? I don't understand that. <laughs> Drew, go ahead with your toast. Oh, uh, so my toast is really simple. I, Courtney and I had like the most terrific summer uh, hosting backyard concerts. And uh, we, we got to, I, I, I really, I don't think I cherished it at the time. I know I enjoyed it, but uh, you know, I, I think cherish is different, right? And, I, and now I really cherish the time that we spent together. And uh, we were able to collaborate and and, and uh, really just sort of dig dig deep into DFI and uh, identify some great ways that that we could engage the community. And when I say we, I mean Courtney. Like she's just absolutely amazing. Like I had like some extension cords. That was really basically it. Like she really did everything. And and just her her passion is inspiring. Her commitment to the community is is exhilarating. Um, I don't think I've ever been more inspired to 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 build and foster a community of hope and caring and growth and a growth mindset uh, until I really engaged Courtney and got to know her. And I think she's truly inspiring. So you're really horribly missed but uh, at the same time like definitely we're, we'll welcome anthony with the open arms excited to see what you do but courtney like uh you're absolutely amazing so cheers cheers oh thank you that was so well said i'm so happy you're my neighbor down the road there's that too that we can walk through there's that too um susan nickel is here someplace and one of those envelopes is from susan it's a brown envelope Brown envelope. Oh, here I found it. It's large. Uh-oh. Large envelope. We know about these large envelopes. Susan, are you there? I'm on a cocky. Susan, oh. did we lose her? Oh, she's trying to get in. Oh my gosh, let's wait. <laughs> I don't know. I had a hard time multitasking with bringing people in and doing this, the, the show. Let's find Susan. Susan! All right, guys. Did we lose you? Uh, you lost me initially. It was my fault. And then I did um, have a nice wait to get readmitted. But it was my fault. There was a, I had a problem doing the slideshow and adding people in simultaneously for some reason. It's screen sharing. Oh. Anyway, we're at the part. Somebody, in the oh, perfect banged, timing. somebody banged on my door while Anne was reading a poem. It was very rude. But it ended up being the delivery of this, which is pretty cool. You guys can see it. So Courtney, do you want to um, do you want to split up the tasks here? You hold it up and I read it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Luckily for you, I have it on another screen, so you don't have to hold it up to your old camera. But obviously, I want to take a second to just mention, of course, um, Senate President Spilk has been so aware of all your work, Courtney. And I cracked up earlier. So you said something like, "Everybody's been doing my job for me." I think we would all disagree. You do so much work and just so tireless. You also mentioned a little while ago that you know COVID's making everybody tired. I thought. Not everybody. Look at you, Courtney. You're still going. So we just all really appreciate it. And like I say, she wanted to make sure that, that we acknowledge uh, all the work that you've done. So here goes your official Senate citation. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Courtney Thrain in recognition of your outstanding service as Executive Director of Downtown Framingham, Inc., providing program support, partnership, and invaluable community service. So Courtney, we just wanted to thank you for uh, thank you for admitting me so that I could say a few words wow. and we could make sure that people see that. This is amazing. Thank you so much. It definitely needs to be framed. 
Um, I re I'm really, really grateful. I know that the, um, the state delegation has been so amazing this entire time since I started. And um, I've just always in debt and I loved working with the Office of Tour and Travel and Tourism, you know, the past few years on all the, the projects and, you know, the state budget and things of that nature. So thank you for making all of that possible. Um, and yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm very humbled. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you for letting me be a part of this today. Yes, and I'll put you. myself on mute and you can go on to whatever. <laughs> did, did anyone else want to speak? Can I, uh, can I add a word, Ain? Sure, jump in, Tiago. Please, thank you. Um, I know I've been MIA, so I apologize. Uh, but um, I would like to rewind the tape to 2017 when I first met Courtney while we're demoing our, our location in downtown Prim. And half of downtown was vacant and Courtney was so excited. And she was just, you know, at the beginning of, of this history that she has made in our lives. And um, I know that many of the businesses in downtown today are better because of you, um, your energy, your tireless, your tireless effort that you've put into each one of these locations, believing in each, each one of these small business owners and going above and beyond to make sure that, you know, they got the support that they need. And I would always remember how hard you fought for us to get the grant for the facade, which you never got, um, but you know, <laughs> you were there. Um, and and we're, we're just a small piece of the puzzle, um, but DFI makes it so important and relevant. And I'm thankful that, you know, DFI exists and I'm sure your legacy will live on and we look forward to, to working with Anthony. So thank you for everything you've done. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's just been so great that this organization exists in the first place and that we have that, you know, boots on the ground work ethic. And I know talking to a lot of folks are like, oh, how do we replicate this for other parts of Framingham? So I, it's great to have this model, this framework that we, you know, I can, you know, step into. But thank you so much for, I have, I actually saw the photo when I was putting my presentation together of the one that we took with yourself and Rod when you were demoing. So I, that was a good memory for sure. Thanks. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say something, Ann, if you don't mind, really quickly. Um, I, I'm going to second what Julie said about um, the hardest working person and having more <laughs> stamina than I thought uh, anyone else had the ability to have. And the uncanniness to have every tool in your car or zip tie or piece of tape or double A, D battery, whatever was needed, um, you know, We've done uh, a bunch of community projects over even, you know, just even with the last year, even with COVID. And every time we show up, you know, we're painting pallets. Courtney has like a hammer to break down, you know, spare, spare nails pointing out, right? We go to install pallets over by uh, 135 train station and Courtney comes with zip ties. She has the stakes in the ground. She's got, you know, she's got the lights all set up. She already went out there and tested everything. So you know, it's, it's just a testament that we all want to do the work for you just as much as you're putting effort towards uh, the downtown community. And I think, you know, that effort just, um, it's contagious. And we, uh, we all can appreciate it. And, you know, we're looking to see that effort continue with Anthony. Uh, I know he's excited to, to jump into the role and he's been able to uh, learn a lot from you over the last uh, month or so um, and just shouting, shadowing you and, uh, you know, thank you for everything you've done and wish you the best going forward. No, thank you, Rayad. Rayad's amazing. Rayad works. Like, you know, there's some people that are just like, they talk philosophy or whatever. Rayad, you know, he puts the work in, he shows up, he helps things get moved. He got some shrubs, shrubs, um, junipers, uh, you know, put in by the train station too. And he has all these students that are so enthusiastic to make a difference. And they have the right mindset, um, in my opinion. So thank you so much, Rayad. And I'm sure Anthony will be very happy to get involved with you and Tiffany and Joe and your whole crew over there. So I, we're, we're so, so blessed to have all these students, you know, involved in our organization. Mike. Oh, Leslie, go ahead. Hi, Courtney. We're definitely gonna miss you. Um, watching the slideshow brought back so many memories of all the events. We, we went to together, met there, you know, thank you for inviting me to be on the board and thank you for everything you did for downtown Framingham and even for yourself and for all of us. So I wish you a really, really great success in your next endeavor. 
And we'd love to welcome Anthony on board and we'll help him as much as we helped you to continue the efforts. Thanks, Thanks Leslie. Good luck. Mike. You know, I, I think that the best thing you can say about a person is that because of their efforts, when they came into a situation or a place, they left the situation or the place in a better condition than it was when they came in. You know, very few, very few people get the opportunity to make changes and have the impact on a community that Courtney has had. Um, we've witnessed something very special during the time that she's been here. And I, I wanna thank her, not just as a board member, but as a resident of Framingham for all the work that she's done and all the foundations that she's laid and all that she's accomplished, we will have a new director. I'm not sure we're ever gonna be able to replace you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Thank you, Mike. That was very sincere. I appreciate it. Thanks. Anthony's on the call, Mike, so. <laughs> it should be nice to so Take notes, dude. This is what you're gonna be facing. <laughs> So our police chief is here. Chief, do you have a few words for Courtney? I do. Uh, they pretty much shadow everybody's words. Uh, I know I have bad days and I often walk downtown and sometimes I'm walking downtown having a bad day because I'm walking downtown because it's a complaint and I want to go see it for myself. And then we'll come along uh, Courtney skipping in front of me with that <laughs> smile and just, you know, puts it all into perspective and lets me realize, you know, th things are bigger. Um, Courtney, your energy, it's infectious. Um, we've had those conversations where you're like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this and whatever I, I would say, absolutely not, that can't be done. We can't do that. And you did it and it was amazing and we were part of it and um, you're gonna be missed. Anthony, you do have some big shoes to fill, but I'm sure uh, there's a blueprint. Uh, Mr. Gatlin, I echo what you say, I think uh, when you, have something entrusted to you, you're supposed to leave it better. Um, it's actually one of my goals and you did absolutely that, Courtney. Uh, you raised the bar for all of us. And I think everybody on this call that's involved with the city has learned from you. I know I have, and uh, a lot of the things you've done, I hope to do as well. Thank you for everything. Um, you always have a partner here at the FPD and we truly, truly appreciate you. That was really sweet. Thank you, Lester. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say to that. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, you're like a huge role model. And I mean, you're, yeah, your credentials are a mile on. So that means a lot coming from you to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for all the police from, from the police department who are here. Sean is here and Harry is here. And I can't tell if anybody else is here, but um, DFI really benefits from the support of the police department. Um, and I, I have to say Oktoberfest was probably one of the things that Lester said, no, we will never have drinking in a public place in downtown. But what a wonderful day that was. And Court, it was Courtney's vision to have a big party downtown and it really worked. And hopefully we'll be able to do it again once this COVID is over. Um, Adam, did you have something? Um, not necessarily, but now that you call them me, I will say something. I'm totally excited. <laughs> Um, Courtney, I just want to say, like, I think I, I kind of think about what the resume or the job description is after you. And I think it's sort of, you know, you have the words like visionary and, you know, risk taker, optimistic, friendly, but it's also like a dash of crazy that you feel like people can propose things that don't, that like, it's kind of like, Chief Baker said, it's like, at first you said, that's a terrible idea, or that's, I don't know how that's going to work. And you have the perseverance and the vision and the willingness to kind of not only just see it through, but to do the hard work to help get it there. Um, and, and I would say, I think the true testament to your work is there's not a, a corner of town in terms of different people who like this political candidate or that political candidate or think this is a good idea or that is a bad, you know, a good idea. There's not a corner of town where people don't think you are doing something really valuable um, and appreciate the sincerity and the effort that you put into everything. And that is just a role model for, for someone who, you know, we want to bring communities together. You've been able to do that. So, you know, we will miss you. And I know Anthony will benefit from kind of 
seeing what you've done and from the, the steps you've taken. So thank you so much. Thank you, Adam, um, for always participating in all the events. And I drove to a lot of people's houses this past year, dropping off swag gifts and like 5K t-shirts and whatever. And so I know I was always going to Adam's house, dropping off something they won in a contest or a 5K shirt. So I had a really good time driving around in 2020 to people's houses and bringing gifts. But thank you so much for all your involvement in your just, you know, if I need a question or I have a concern, just your mentorship as well. Thank you. Janelle, jump in. Hi, thanks. I'm, uh, I've been off camera because I'm making dinner for my, my kids while I listen. Um, but I'm Janelle, I'm the executive director of ATAC and I just wanted to jump in to say that I'm, I'm sorry that I, I didn't get enough opportunity to work with you, Courtney, directly uh, in, my, in my COVID year as, my, as executive director, but um, you have been so instrumental in in helping me navigate some of the systems of Framingham and the community intricacies of Framingham and helping project the development of downtown where our venue is. And I can't think of a single time that I've asked you for help where you didn't just immediately provide the help that I needed. Um, and I know how busy you must be. And obviously from this call, every other person has the same experience. So I'm concerned about whether or not you sleep ever, um, but you, your presence and your enthusiasm and your willingness, your just your generosity of time has been really a meaningful impact on my role um, and you will be sorely missed, um, but I'm excited for your next adventure. So I just wanna say thank you in person. Thank you, Janelle. I'm, I know we'll catch up in person and it's really hard to be to run a nonprofit. I know there's some nonprofit directors on this call or ones that have previously done it. So I have a soft spot for anyone who's running a nonprofit for sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, there are a lot of people on this call that I haven't asked yet. Um, Jim Lambert, did you want to say something? Just you can wave at me. <laughs> Um, Jack, Jack Hendler. Yeah, Courtney, this is Jim. Just, I'll be quick. I mean, Courtney, uh, you, you've been amazing, uh, for this group. You know, I can speak as well for my company who invested heavily in the downtown. Um, your impact on that downtown had a lot to do with that and a lot to do with our success. Um, the people who see you more than I do, frankly, that work there at the property, love you um love seeing you and getting you know, your involvement in the downtown and so we can't thank you enough for all your efforts over the years um that i've been involved and we wish you uh, the best of luck in your future endeavors thank you so much thanks jim I, I loved doing that article last summer with ty that was just amazing like we need more of that so thank you so much for being on dfi and staying on the board and all of that it means a lot of course jack you're up so I, my involvement with DFI started probably about eight years ago when Holly dropped by the brewery. Um, and it was a time we really needed a lot of support and Holly was really our, our champion and really made us feel at home in downtown. And you really were able to continue that on. You, you were the champion for so many people who started businesses or became part of our community the past past five years now. So it, it, I think that's the most important thing that we do on, on many levels is just building that community and making people feel welcome and helping them out when they, when they need help. So uh, I'm just really thankful that you're able to be as successful as you were the past five years and uh, keep that, keep that, that uh, community building and keep that, uh, um, uh, in medicine in downtown Birmingham. So thank you so much for all your hard work the past five years. Thank, thanks, Jack. I know Jack has a whole team dedicated just to working with me. So and like, <laughs> and like donating their time to working with me too, like pro bono or whatever. So it's just amazing that I have like this awesome group like Kat and Mo, you know, to work with um, and to, you know, fulfill our projects and get into those details. And I told Amy Weeder, who's on the call, that she needs to teach Anthony the whole freight elevator system and not to ride in the freight elevator. If you ride in the freight elevator, Jack will fire you. Yeah. you, could, you might, maybe you're not working for him, but he'll find a way to get you yeah. fired. I didn't yeah. write it. 
So. Big, big OSHA safety violation. Yes, you gotta, yes. gotta be safe. Very good. Thanks, Jack. Thank you very much. Anybody else just speak up or wave at me? Brian. Oh, Brian. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Um, I share an office with Courtney, so I have a lot of uh, interactions with her, and it's just been great, right? I own properties, rental properties, and I would tell you Framingham is just very different, um, and I love it. And I love it because of what you do. Um, you are kind of the glue that brings the community together. Um, we have tenants that you've helped. Um, we've done lots of building improvements, which I feel really proud of because DFI was able to help us do the awnings and the Boston Marathon. It's just, it's always something. So I don't know how you do it, but I really will miss you. Um, I will welcome my new, uh, my, my, my new roommate, I guess, right? My office mate, Anthony. Um, but yeah, you, you made a lot of change and I know that um, you'll be successful in whatever you do. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. I would just, yeah, I think Brian's office, it has this like nice light green color and it's in the second floor. So it's really good for like brain productivity and just, you know, getting work done. So, um, you know, Brian came and was like, share this awesome office. And so it was a no brainer. So thank you, Brian. Yeah. John. I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I wanted to add one thing. Aside from being a champion for all of us and for small businesses and extracting the best out of all of us, Courtney. One thing that hasn't been mentioned is the way you tied the neighborhoods around downtown into downtown. And for many of us, and I represent two of the neighborhoods around downtown, and I know from talking to Councilor Shepard, who is a, a friend and colleague, and the, the um, block parties you did at Butterworth, at Anna Murphy, at Washakam Beach, they helped the communities around gel within themselves, but they also helped us reinforce our relationship as residents to the businesses in downtown and to make an extra effort to get to know people, to uh, spend their commerce and their dollars in downtown. So thank you for always being there, but also for the residents and the people that surround and are the patrons of the businesses that are here. Thank you. You're wonderful. Oh, thank good you. Luck. Um, yeah, thanks. That means a lot. Um, you know, sometimes if you go to city meetings or town meetings, you see the same faces all the time and kind of like the loudest voices, the busybodies. But there's so many amazing people that live on the feeder streets in the downtown that want to get involved, volunteer with DFI and make their community as great as it can be. So tapping into those um, folks has been just really, really good for the organization. So thank you for bringing that up. Okay, I don't want to cut this off, but anybody else? All right, well, we have another order of business and you're all involved in this one. Um, we need to have a vote and approve the executive turnover from Courtney to Anthony as of Sunday, March 7th. So do I hear a motion? Motion. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay, everyone in favor? You have to be in yes. favor, I'm sorry. <laughs> Courtney said she would. Courtney said she would shut off the Zoom call if people voted <laughs> against this motion. <laughs> Amy, yes, you want to speak or you're no, just I, voting? No, I'm just <laughs> voting. I'm just not remembering to put my hand down. Okay, so um, I'd like to welcome Anthony to our group, and I know everyone has beverage. Courtney, one of the things Jack brought to you were some beverages, so. You're, you're officially, you've officially been replaced. So. Oh, good. <laughs> you can have your beverage now. Um, I'm gonna stick with this. So Anthony, I can't see him anymore. Anthony, welcome. Yes. And I, I, I know you have a little report for us. Yeah. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough act to follow for sure. Um, so uh, but thank you all for being here. Um, and I guess I would also like to raise a glass to Courtney. Um, thank you for uh, the past two months of onboarding me. Um, you know, I've been learning from you as much as possible and um, you know, meeting everybody in the, in the downtown business district and all the city employees that 
that I'm going to be working with. Um, it's definitely been great to put faces to names and start developing those relationships. Um, so it, there's definitely big shoes to fill, but I uh, look forward to stepping into them. Um, so here's to Courtney. Uh, thank you. And um, I wish you all the best uh, going forward. Um, and next, uh, thank you to the uh, Downtown for MEM Board of Directors um, for bringing me aboard and for trusting me with this uh, huge responsibility. Um, you know, it's not lost on me. Uh, I know it's a big change um, for an executive director, a new executive director to come in. Um, I very much feel like a racehorse in the starting gate ready, you know, ready to take off. Um, so look forward to working with you all. Um, and just a little bit of background information about me uh, for those who haven't met or who don't recognize me after my haircut yesterday. I got my winter coat shorn off, um, so I look a little bit different. Um, I grew, grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts, um, so a stone's throw away. I went to UMass Amherst for my undergrad in polit political science, and uh, I attended my graduate program at Harvard Extension School and I studied uh, environmental management there. And uh, what brought me to this role at uh, DFI was, uh, as Courtney and some of, some of you have mentioned, you know, getting out there in a the community and get, putting my boots on the ground and making a difference. Um, so that's what I'm most excited about uh, coming into this role. Um, as the executive director, um, I'm going to be uh, continuing to focus my efforts on um, the outstanding support Courtney has been giving to the businesses downtown, uh, as well as um, community development, pro uh, community building projects, um, and getting to know everybody in the area. Um, I'm also a big supporter of the trades. Um, I'm a hobbyist woodworker. Um, I also dabble a little bit in blacksmithing. Um, so I'd love to be able to bring those, um, that, that passion into my work at DFI in some capacity. Um, so that's something uh, I'm looking forward to. Um, so in closing, uh, I'm very excited to fully step into this role, um, you know, spread my wings and take off. Um, and if anyone, anyone wants to connect with me, uh, feel free to send me an email and we can, we can chat. Um, so once again, thank you, everybody, and um, very excited to to start. That's great. Thanks, Anthony. So here's our toast to our new executive director, Anthony Lucivero. Welcome. And we I forgot to mention this when we started, but we will have a party when everything opens up. I don't know what it will be yet, but we will have a party so that we can all be together and um send Courtney off appropriately, though this has been a pretty good Zoom party and welcome Anthony in person. So that would be great. Yeah. Um, She's already got us drinking at a party, see? <laughs> um, we, we were trying to think of something fun. So the toast was our, our bit of fun. Um, so I have to say goodbye to all the people that are not part of our board because we have to go into executive session now. It's the most awkward thing that we have to do, but we have to go into executive session. So thanks everyone for coming and DFI board members, please stay. And okay. bye-bye. Nancy, Nancy just said, thank you. Oh, thank you. Deputy Chief Riley can stay. Yes, Deputy Chief Riley can stay. <laughs> hey, that worked. Um, Last year when we had our, I have to say the la last year